Hello and welcome back. We have a basic Docker file now written, and I hope you found all of that quite straightforward. In this chapter, it's time for things to come together now. We're going to see how to run real Java applications in a Docker container. On the Udemy page for this course, attached to this chapter, you should find a file called chapter7.zip. There's a folder in there called chapter7. And inside there, I've given you the Java project for Fleetman Web App. Copy the Fleetman Web App folder into a workspace folder anywhere you like. And then open up the workspace in Eclipse. As usual, you can use your own development environment if you prefer. There's no specific reason for using Eclipse other than it's just a good default for us. If you are working in Eclipse, it's a bit awkward to open an existing project. The easiest way I find is file new Java project, even though the project already exists. And the important thing is to use exactly the same project name, Fleetman Web App. And as soon as you type that last character there, it will it will offer to automatically configure the JRE and you'll be able to click finish. If that doesn't happen, check your spelling of Fleetman Web App and make sure that the workspace folder that you're using contains the folder called Fleetman Web App. Click on Finish and we're good to go. This is actually a standard Spring Boot application. The first task we'll need to follow is to right click on the pom.xml, run as, maven build, and then in the goals, eclipse colon eclipse. I realize, of course, you'll be familiar with all of this if you worked on Spring Boot before, but I just want to be careful and make sure that I've covered every step. Then once that's run, right click on your project, select refresh, and you should now have a clean compile in Eclipse. And all we're going to do now is run this application locally. Now, this is part of a much bigger microservice architecture, and it does really depend on other microservices being up and running. But the main tweaks I've done with this project is I've I've given it a kind of standalone mode in development. And the way that works, just to fill you in, is if we look under source main Java, under the services package, I've provided a stub implementation of one of the microservices. So if we're running under the profile of development or Docker demo, and you'll see why that's important shortly. Instead of going out to some external service to get the data for the vehicles, instead it just generates some random data for the vehicles. And that's why you'll have seen in earlier chapters those vehicles just bouncing around in a very strange way. We're going to bring all of the microservices together in Docker, and then you're going to see lots of vehicles all moving around properly. But for now, this will be enough. Now, the only problem with that is if you want to run the application, you can right click, of course, on Fleetman application, run as Java application. But because we haven't set that profile and it's not the default profile, you will get a crash application failed to start because it can't find an implementation of that position tracker. So the solution to that is we need to run as and then run configurations dot 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 and then click on Java application and then the button here will create a new launch configuration and then the key thing is under arguments importantly under VM arguments dash capital D spring dot profiles dot active equals development that will just set an active profile and the difference now should be everything's up and running. It's running on port 8080 in your browser, the application that you're familiar with by now. So one of the objectives is to show you how to deploy war files into a Docker container, probably a Docker container running Tomcat. Now, slight difficulty here is that this is a Spring Boot application. And as you will know, if you've worked with Spring Boot, Spring Boot doesn't need war files and it doesn't need to be deployed to Tomcat. So for that reason, I've fiddled around a little bit and I've bent this application so that it can be run as a war file. 
There's full details on how to do this in the Spring Boot reference manual, but the, 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 the basics of it are really that you need an application class which has which extends Spring Boot Servlet Initializer, and it has this method inside it. It's just a little bit of magic, really, that you need to do according to the reference manual. And I've made a change in the pom.xml, looking all the way down to the Spring Boot plugin, the Maven plugin here, you have a configuration where the main class is pointing to that class that we've just seen. The line I've commented out here is just in place for if we did want to go back to running this as a standalone jar file. So I've done that just so if you're in the position of having a war file and you want to know how to deploy it to a Tomcat based Docker container, then I can show you how. Let's stop the running application and we can right click on the POM. We'll run a Maven build and this time we're going to run the package goal which will generate a war file. Well, I'm glad this has happened because we do get some support calls about this. By default, Eclipse is running its own private Java runtime. And unless we do some configuration, Maven can't find the Java compiler, hence the error here. So I'll keep this in the video. I know we've got it in other courses, but you need to go to Window Preferences and then find under the Java tab, and I think that will be on the Apple menu on a Mac. And then under the Java tab, go to Installed JREs, and then click on Add, select Standard VM, and then on the Directory button here, browse to your installation of a JDK, which will be under Program Files, Java, and then whichever version of Java you're working on. So I'll go for this JDK 1.8.0. Make sure this is a JDK and not a JRE. If you don't have one of those, then you will need to go to the Oracle site to download the JDK and install it. Click on OK, click on Finish, and then click on the checkbox here to switch to the JDK. Click on OK. And now on the Run button here, we can rerun that build. And all being well, that will be a success. And you should now have in the project's target directory a war file for your application.